Hey guys, welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial today, and today I'm going to show you how to play an animation or a mechanim animation which is using the more modern version of the animation system that they brought in with Unity 5. Now, this one is one I've been avoiding using, but I've used it in a couple of bits recently, and it's not one that everybody explains how to do, but I'll go through some sort of basic examples on using it and setting it up and playing a basic animation, because a few people have actually asked me. So, in the scene we've got something basic, just FPS control and I've got a cube. Now, um, I'm just going to remove the things because I did a little bit of testing before we do it, so when you get your cube it'll just be with a mesh renderer and a collider. When you want to add an animation, you can go window, animation. We're going to be doing it from Unity, so you can actually do it if you bring it in from a end 3D program or something like that. But when you go to the animation window and it'll pop up when you go window animation, we'll just click create a new animation. What we'll do is we'll save this in and we'll call it box move and we'll press save and you'll see the timeline across here um, to make an animation. I'll just hold control and use my scroll wheel to zoom out. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to push the timeline to about one second, get the move tool and push it that way, and then go scrub across to two seconds, grab the first two keyframes, copy those, and press Control V to paste them in the end. So all we get there is we get a pretty much a looped animation. And we could um, adjust the, the way it actually moves by adjusting the curves and things, but for the sake of this, here's your animation, and you want to know how to play that on Mechanim and things like that, because say on our cube, you get the animator component, and say we press play, um, it'll just play automatically forever, and you know, we want to be able to control when it actually plays. So if you go window and animator, which is slightly different, you'll get another thing that pops up. And what we can do is we can select the cube and it will show up some, um, it's called the state machine, which controls all the things. It's more like a flow chart to control what's happening. So it will show the state and exit and things like this. And I mean, I'm not 100% clued up on everything, but what this means is that it runs through and it'll instantly play the animation and if we double click it you can see that it's looped. So what we can do is to stop it actually playing automatically. We can right click in the empty space. We can create a new state, create empty. So now we've got something that does nothing because we've got nothing in it and I'll just call it static or something like that. So then you can see there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click my static and say the set as the default layer. Now the entry then runs to the static um, object that we've got. Now if we go back into the scene and press play, you'll see that nothing happens because we've it doesn't do anything, it doesn't understand what to do. Now on our box move, what we can do is double click and untick loop so that when we play it in the script, it won't loop when we do it. So that's all well and good, but how do we tell it what to do? So if we go create JavaScript, we'll create a, a script called We'll call it animation play because this can be uh, used for any type of animation that you might want. So we'll get into whatever program you're in and I'm in Visual Studio and what I'll do is I'll get rid of this two starting functions and we'll start by writing our own. So what I'm going to do is write start uh, void start two brackets and two curly brackets below and then we're going to say this dot get component and then in two angle brackets we're going to look for the animator component and then we're going to have two brackets after that and we'll say dot play and then in brackets we'll have the name of the animation so we called it cube move if I just quickly check it was called box move so we'll call it box move and then we need to have a comma minus one comma 0, 0.0 f and then a semicolon on the end and all we're doing here is we're going to add this to the actual box itself so we're going to say that this seeing as though we're calling this it means the object that it's living on we're going to get the component animator and we're going to play the box move animation 
um, minus one zero. I'm not 100% clued up on these two values, but you can have a little look at the Unity documentation and it just says to use minus one and zero F. And you just need to increment, you just need to change your um, wording here. And obviously this will do it at the start of the game, but say you put it in the update function and had it on a button press, you could do that. But I'll show you what happens here because you saw that it didn't play. So I'll minimize, I will go onto the cube I'll put box, I will put the animation play onto it and you can see that if I untick it and we press play, nothing happens. But if I tick this and at the beginning it should just play the animation as so. Perfect. And that's all it did. So say you might want this actually looped for instance. What we can do is, I don't know why it's created another instance of itself there what we can do is we could potentially say you've got multiple animations on one object so you've got for a character but for this box we'll duplicate the animation that we've got on the box which so it's exactly the same and we'll just call this box move loop if we select the box move then right click in here we can create from selected so it will add the box move loop up here so what this means is that now if we double click box move loop we can tick on loop time pause and if we double click on box move you can see it won't be looped so now we have two animations on this box and one looped one non-looped so what we could do potentially is we could go into this script now copy the exact same line again and instead of having that we can just call it box move loop now it'll do it straight away after it but we just i just want to put a little pause so we can um, you know, wait a, f a couple of seconds before it actually does the animation. So what we can do is we can go yield, return new, wait for seconds, and I'll put five seconds in, and I'll put a semicolon. I just need to change the void to ie num numerator, and that lets me do a coroutine to wait a couple of set a few seconds. Now what we'll notice is that when we play we'll get the normal animation it'll stop we'll be waiting five seconds throughout that and then once it starts playing we'll get the state where all it does is just loop forever and ever and ever until we decide to you know do something else with it and what we could also potentially write if you need to stop your animation at any point is that you can just say this dot get component like we did before two angle brackets again just write in the animator because that's what we've been using um, two brackets then we'll consider dot stop with two brackets and a semicolon so realistically all we're doing is just saying we're looking for the component animator we're playing box move or we're paying box move loop and then on the animator we're just making sure that we've got um, not something that doesn't do anything at the beginning so it doesn't play the animation until we tell it obviously if you've got a character this could be idle or and then we've got mox, box move and box loop one which loops and one which doesn't and it just we choose when to play them accordingly so as I said you could have an update function you could have you know when you press W and um, the animation played anything like that it's really dependent on what you need to do so this was just a basic example of how to make just an animation basically play using uh, the mechanism animation system so thanks very much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers